Welcome everyone to, this is my third Marketing Masterclass webinar and the title is How to Quit Your Day Job. This really came up from a survey that I did among my own you know, Inner Circle Group members to say what's the biggest challenge, what's missing right now in your web marketing education. You know, what's the biggest thing that's holding you back from your dreams and what I discovered was that there is a question lurking in the back of many people's minds of, I'm in a day job now, I'm building up this web design or web marketing business on the side, but I don't seem to be able to finally make the break from the day job into doing the web stuff full time. So basically, nowadays what I do is it's my full time job to support this group of people. So I've put together a presentation, which I hope will light the way to some degree. Okay, so here's my goal for this presentation. I want to do two things. Firstly, I want to inspire you that it is possible to quit your day job and support yourself and your family, if you have a family, with your own web design or web marketing business. Secondly, I'm setting out to give you a set of tactics that you can apply now to help make it happen. The theory is all very well, but what can you start doing today? What are the real changes that you need to make in the way that you work in order to affect this break that is so challenging? So I'm going to start by talking about the trap that so many of us are in. You're You've got a day job, you're trying to build up a business on the side, and you don't seem to get anywhere. You don't seem to get far enough. So let me just illustrate that for you. It's like you've got, your, your day job is the, is the big plant there, and the, your side business is almost grow, trying to grow in the shade of your day job. You're aiming for, your, or you need a particular level of income, in order to support yourself, support your family, and your day job provides that. What we tend to find is, of course, that our expenditure rises to match our income, or in many cases, slightly exceed our income. And what we want is, we want the side business to be able to grow to match that level so that we can give up the day job, right? But it's hard to do. There's always this kind of gap there. And it's very difficult to give up the day job while there's this deficit on the side business. So that is really the starting point of today. I'll just describe the trap a little bit more. One of the big problems that we find is when you've got maybe a full-time job and you're trying to do this extra work, that extra work has to eat into your normal non-work time, which is the time that you would spend with your family, the time that you would spend recuperating, having vacations, having downtime. All of that, those important things can be threatened by trying to set up a business on the side. And you, bottom line is, you can't do that forever. Unless you're a complete workaholic and you don't have a family. right? Your side business may also then threaten your day job to some degree. And that can cause a lot of tension. So if you're working late hours, you're tired, and your attention isn't really on your primary job as such, then your performance might actually go down. And what we tend to find is that it's the day job that wins. It's the day job that holds forth. Right? Bottom line is, the day job is paying your bills. The side business isn't paying your bills. So if it comes down to it, you know, the day job is the runt of the litter. And when there's a, a call to be made, what we tend to do is, is stick with what we know, stick with that day job. Here's something else that I think is really quite critical. If you're aware of Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he talks about this sector of work that he calls important but not urgent. And that can be lots of things that, are, that can deliver benefits in the future. Things like education, 
training, resting, downtime, strategy, right? In terms of building up your side business, even things like sales and marketing can end up going by the wayside because you, you get a job in, you get a web design job, a bit of marketing work, and then you focus on that because your time is so limited because you've got this day job. So you do some work on the side, marketing and sales and strategy can go out of the window. And that really hobbles your ability to build up that side business to the level that it needs to be, where you can cut the cord and make the transition over to your own business. And the end result we see time and time again is the side business can't ever grow out of the day job's shadow. Because there just seems like there aren't enough hours in the week. So that's the problem, that's the challenge that we face today. And of course, it all comes down to cash at the end of the day, and you find that there's just never enough cash to give you that buffer that you need in order to be able to give up the day job and to make the jump over. So the end result, you keep trying to grow your way there, right? You keep trying to make it a bit bigger, another client, another slightly better client, another slightly better paying client. Right? You're trying to grow your way there, but you'll probably run out of time. And if you don't run out of time, you might run out of energy or just patience with the process. And it's a very, very common scenario. Does that sound familiar? So you can end up feeling like this. You know, you, you know where you want to get to. You just can't see how to get there. It seems like a big, scary leap into the void and giving up all security and trusting blind faith. Well, what I'm going to try and do in the next 30, 40 or 60 minutes is to see what I can do to remove some of that fear. I'm going to try and give you some strategies and some specific tactics that you can use that will hopefully by the end leave you feeling, do you know what, now I think I can do this, I know what I've been doing wrong, I know what I can do different. So that's the main chunk of the rest of the presentation is making the break, how can we do it? First I want to dispel some fundamental myths about quitting your day job and starting up with your own business. Here's absolutely fundamental one, right? This idea that hours equate to money, right? We need to get, we need to drop this idea completely. It does not help you in any way. There is no easier way to limit your profitability, limit your earnings than by working to hourly rates. It's really simple equation. If you work to an hourly rate, which is fixed, there's a finite number of hours in the week. Unless your hourly rate is $1,000 and it's really high, you'll, you'll find it very, un, uh, very difficult to find enough hours to generate enough money to build up that buffer that you can give up on the other business. You've got to just abandon the idea of hourly rates. We don't quote clients uh, by the hour unless it's a, a, a high consulting rate. You know I, that is something that that I will do. Uh, I'll charge eight hundred dollars an hour if somebody wants to me to analyze their business, and they'll get a good hour of my time and uh, great value as well. However, if I if I do any other kind of work, I I never quote by the hour. Apart from anything else. It's, uh, it will leave you inclined to work slower. Why does a client want you to work slower, right? If you get paid by the hour. No, what we've got to do is we've got to change our thinking to be all about value, value created, value generated, not the hourly cost. So that there's some really fundamental changes there because then we start to talk to clients in terms of this is what I'm going to do for you, this is the value that you're going to get and what I charge you is in some way a, 
percentage or a proportion of that value that you get. So it becomes an investment, not a cost. And there is a fundamental difference there. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I've got loads and loads of other things to tell you about. And there's a really, really good free ebook out there. It's actually donationware. It's at breakingthetimebarrier.freshbooks.com. If you haven't read it, get it. I read it in about 30 minutes flat. It's very quick and it will really explain very, very clearly this difference between cost based and value based pricing. So I thoroughly recommend that you get hold of that now. Not right now. Here's the second myth it's good to be a generalist. I think one of the things that's really appealing about working with the web and this very fast-paced, uh, rich environment that, that we work in is that you actually can try and master everything. You've got things like SEO, you've got graphic design, you've got building websites, whether it's handcrafted or with WordPress or some platform like that. and it's it's almost limitless all the things you can do but you can you can have a go you can try and do it all in the old days and i've been doing this for about 20 years you we had people called webmasters and it really was your job to to do everything right nowadays i think it's a big mistake and if you want to make this break get out of working for the man and start to work for yourself being a generalist is an extremely bad idea. Here's the bottom line, guys. You cannot be great at everything. You can't even be very good at everything. And it's foolish to try. If you imagine trying to keep up, even to keep up with HTML, CSS, and WordPress, that's a full-time job in itself. You know, just one area, web page production. You, you can't learn everything that there is to know about WordPress. Nobody can. It's just too big now. You can't learn every... You can't be a great copywriter and a great SEO consultant and master pay-per-click and do user interface design and Flash and all these different things and YouTube marketing, right? Because there's... Everything's moving so fast and there's just a limited number of hours in the week. So what what you've got is a choice in front of you to say either I'm going to be a jack of all trades and master of none or I'm going to get really really good at something. And my advice is the latter, get really good at something. Specializing really works for lots of reasons. One of the most important reasons is it gives you a point of difference that distinguishes you from the rest of the market. There are a lot of web designers out there. There are a lot of web marketing people out there. There are a lot of people who'll do SEO. What you need to do is to find a special kind of spike in the market, right? Where there may be a smaller market, but they want something specific. And if that specific thing that they want matches what you're offering, then you get several benefits. One of the benefits is that you can command higher rates. You simply get paid more for being an expert in your area rather than a generalist. You also get better work from better clients as well. Now, this is something we found again and again and again, and it's a lesson that, that you know, it seems like all my students have to go through a few times before we get it into our heads that cutting our costs is really dumb. And the more a client pays, the more expertise they expect you to have, the more leeway they give you, and the higher results they expect as well. And that's all good stuff. We want clients who expect the best from us, because that will bring out our best work, and that will make great case studies, and that will make happy clients. It's hard to please a cheap client. And we find this again and again and again, that the, cheaper, the cheapest clients, the, the skin flink clients who want to nickel and dime over every proposal and get lots of different quotes, they tend to want to run the whole show. If you want to, another analogy on this, look up an article I wrote called What Kind of Whore Are You? on Web Design from Scratch. I won't repeat that now. 
So is it good to be a generalist? No. If you've seen my uh, previous two masterclasses, you know that I'm very, very big on the 80-20 rule, the Pareto Principle. And this is an example that I used in the previous masterclass, which is when you take all the hours that you might work in a particular month, this is what the 80-20 principle would say that the value of those hours, how they're distributed. The 80-20 rule basically says that the top 20% of the input produces 80% of the results. And conversely, the bottom 80% produces only 20% of the results. And this is a pattern we find again and again and again in nature. If you apply that, let's say that you uh, do about 160 hours work in a month and generate $10,000 worth of value. Okay, so let's say somebody wants to pay you $10,000 a month. The According to the 80-20 rule, and... Um, if you go to 8020curve.com, this is a fantastic tool that Perry Marshall created. This is what I'm using here. That's where the screenshot's from. If you put that into his tool, it says that the most important, the most valuable hour that you do in that month is probably generating about $1,200 worth of value. Okay? The, the, so the top fifth, the top 20%, of those hours that you that you invest that you spend are generating 80% of the value that means that a lot of the hours the majority of the hours that that we work we're not delivering an awful lot of value and i believe this is true and here's an example that that i like to use if you think about it as the difference between clark kent and superman and there's this point around that 80% mark. Below that point, you're being Clark Kent. I'm being Clark Kent. We're doing stuff that we don't have to do, that somebody with less skill than us could actually do. Stuff that takes up time but doesn't generate much value. Then above that magical point, we're in Superman time. That's when you are really exercising your special powers. This is something I talk about again and again and again. You've got to identify your special powers and use them. So my advice is everybody needs to get really clear about your special powers. What is it that you do particularly well? What is it that you love doing? What is it that you've got particular insights or experience or knowledge in? And, I mean, I, I'm British, and it's, it doesn't come easy for us to acknowledge what we're really good at. We tend to be quite self-effacing, probably more than uh, people in, in other cultures. But I think for all of us, it's challenging to say, actually, do you know what? This is what I'm really good at. And then also to say, I'm going to set out to become the man for that, the guy for that, the woman for that. I'm going to be the expert for that. I'm going to be number one in that. I've written a whole book about that called How to Be Number One. Another thing you might do is write down your past victories. Just own the successes that you've had in, in, your, in your life, in your career so far. And what is it that you did that was so special? You know, what, what are your talents? Let's see if we can dig them out. The third thing I would advise you to do is to identify your golden triangle. I'll, sh I'll show you that in just a second. And then you've, you've got to big up yourself. Big up your bad self. Yeah? It's not... And we, we, I've talked about this in the previous masterclasses. You may not have seen those, those ones. But it doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve the world to play small. To hide your light under a bushel. Right? If you're good at something, own being good at it, right? And set out to be as good as you possibly can. So that what that does is it honors the parents that gave you the gift of life and the educators that gave you the gift of education. Right? Don't modesty playing small doesn't serve anybody and it doesn't serve the world, it doesn't make the world a better place. I think we have a responsibility on every level to be the best that we can be. 
So here's the golden triangle that I mentioned. And it's at the intersection of three things. First one is, what do you love doing? And this is the most important thing. The greatest of these is love. Right? If you don't actually love doing something, you're not going to be bouncing out of bed in the morning to do it. You're not going to want to read about it, to learn about it, to be enthusiastic about it. You're not going to be able to spread the word about it and infect other people with a passion about what you do. If you don't love doing it, you shouldn't be doing it, right? Delegate it to somebody else if it has to be done. The second of the circles is, are you any good at it? If you, if you love doing it, but you suck at it, that's called a hobby, right? And that's fine, but that's not what your business is about, and that's not your golden triangle. We're looking for stuff that you love to do and that you do well. And then finally, is there any money in it? Is it profitable? If it's not profitable, right, um, and you, you love it, you may be good at it, then it's still a hobby. right? If it is profitable and it needs to be done, but you don't have to do it, you don't love doing it, get somebody else to do it. But then what we're looking for is that golden triangle in the middle. Stuff that you love, you do well, and is profitable. So just taking this, really good exercise. Write down all the things you do in the week and see where, you, where would you place them in that Venn diagram. And what is there in the middle? And if you find something that's in the middle, you love it, you're good at it, and there's money in it, that's the thing that you should be doing more of. That's the thing that you should be developing. And the things that fall outside of there, don't give them too much time. Don't give them too much air. Can you stop doing them? Can you get somebody else to do it? So here's my golden triangle, right? Here's what I love doing, I do really well, and is also profitable. So this is really kind of my mission statement. This is what I'm doing in the world. I explore and discover what really makes websites work. Then I pass that knowledge on to the next generation of web designers. I strongly advise that you get to your own kind of mission statement like this, because that's going to show the path ahead of you. And they also, I, I can't stress enough how to what extent it makes the decisions that you have to make so much easier when you know why you're here, why you're on this earth. But we have to crack on because there's lots more content to get through. Here's another myth. This is really sneaky and insidious, this one. Working for myself means I'm on my own, right? It's a myth, it's not true. On one level, it kind of means Oh, there's a big risk, okay? But if you think about it, if you're employed by somebody, you've only got one client. Your client is your boss, your manager, the person who hired you. If you fail to please that one client, all your income could disappear overnight. I've been made redundant a couple of times, so I know what it's like. and it's likely that you've experienced the same. You know, we tend to have a lot more jobs and a lot more careers these days than one generation ago. So employment is not really the safe option. There are people in my group who are anticipating redundancy at some point in the future, so they're putting plans in place to pick up where they left off and, and still to be able to support their family. Something else I'd recommend is don't don't just think, oh, I'm on my own, I've got to do it all myself, right? You've got resources, you've got assets, and one of those is friends and family. If you want to strike out as a web designer or a marketer, sit down and have a think. Write down everybody I know who's got a business. And then, you know, why not just approach them? Have you got a website? Can I make you a website? Can I optimize your website? It's very likely that you know somebody that's got a business that's turning over a reasonable chunk of money, and if you can optimize their website, you're delivering a chunk of value, added value. And in return for doing that, you could then justify a healthy fee. Here's another angle on that. 
partnering, and I'm going to come back to this later on, partnering with other professionals. So say you're particularly good at Google AdWords or you're good at Facebook pay-per-click or whatever. If you were to partner with somebody as an informal partnership who is very good at landing page optimization or copywriting, for example, you can trade your special powers with them and they can trade their special powers with you. Because one hour of your special power at analyzing an AdWords campaign could save them five hours and get a better result. And in return, they give you one hour of their copywriting time or their optimization time could save you five hours. It's a big world, right? There's a lot of networks out there. I think that it's kind of in our psyche from the industrial revolution age to think that it's a scary world out there and you know we can't really survive without a boss but bottom line is what's the worst that can really happen and that's a question that i quite often find it useful to to ask myself what's the worst that can happen in this situation am i can i lose the roof over my head am i going to find myself unable to feed my family right and very often the answer is going to be a resounding no so if you've got partners make yourself a network join a network be part of groups linkedin is full of professional groups there's also local networking groups right so you rope up with people join them help them out refer clients to them get referrals from them or subcontract work to them or from them and everybody wins networking is important so yeah everyone wins it's called roping up imagine climbing a mountain everyone's individual it only takes one fall for you to slide down the mountain and die but if everyone ropes up together everyone gets up the mountain because everyone can help each other up and the risks are minimized myth number four it's a good one this i need to match my day job pay now i did say that we tend to find that our expenditure grows to match or slightly exceed our, rev our, our income. However, what I would say on this is you need to be planning to exceed what you're earning right now greatly. Yeah, You need to aim for much higher, significantly higher income than you may be getting from your day job now and I'll explain why. In, I like to use this, this analogy from high jumping. If you've done any track and field athletics, if, if you're high jumping and you aim for the bar, you will knock the bar off. If you're doing the high jump, you need to aim for the clear, fresh air well above the bar. You need to be jumping as high as you can. That's the way to clear the bar. And I actually read this quote this morning in, in a book by Al Rees. He's a, a marketing branding expert. He says, aim high. You can never achieve more than you aspire to. Aim high. You can never achieve more than you aspire to. Right? So if you set your goal for a certain level, you're not going to exceed that because our expectations are limited by our aspirations. So you, you might reach it or you might get a bit under it. Right, but really important to aim as high as you can. And to that I would also add price high. And I could talk about this for a day, but I'm going to crack on. So that's four myths that uh, I hope is just starting to get you thinking slightly differently about the world of self-employed work. Now we come on to the two major strategies. right? After this, we're going to um, cover a, a, a bunch of specific tactics that you can take away. But let's just summarize the two main strategies, right? What are we going to do? Are we going to transition from day job to running my own business? Or are we going to do a sharp break? Are we going to make the jump? Are we going to take a run up and make the jump and commit? And I'm not saying that either one is right or wrong you need to decide what's right for your own situation. So let's look at transition first. Here's something that I really, really want you to 
ingest and drill into your head, right? You're, and this is challenging. It's a difficult thing to, to take on board. You're not going to get there by doing more of what you do now. You're not going to make the break. If you're in a day job now and you are starting to build or you've been building a, a web design or marketing business on the side, you're not going to be able to get to the point where you can make a break by doing more of what you're doing now. If you could, you would have done it already. Right? But somehow the equation isn't balancing. Here's a great quote by W.L. Bateman. It says, keep on doing what you've always done and you'll keep on getting what you've always got. In other words, I would say that drastic action of some kind is needed. And I'm not saying that it's not possible to transition from one to the other. I'm saying that you can do it, but you're not going to do it without making some important changes to the way that you think or the way that you work now. So here's, here's a few suggestions and ideas, which may be challenging. I hope they are. One, can you reduce the number of hours that you work in your day job? You know, and let's let's not immediately think, oh, do you know what? No, I, I, I can't at all. That's, that's unthinkable. No, it's not unthinkable. Could you go part-time? Could you do a job share with somebody else? How about working from home? And I've added this one. I've, I actually did this one. I was working not in a an employed position, but I was working on a full-time contract that had been going on for three years, right? And it involved three hours of commuting by train every day. I got to the point, I'd been there for nearly three years, and I said to the client, which was a government agency in, in the UK, I want to come in only occasionally, right? Because quite honestly, I've been doing this for three years and it's hard work. What I was doing was I was building up my own agency on the side, but I thought I could make better use of those three hours than sitting on a train every day. So I said, look, can I carry on doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing, but working mostly from home? And if you need me to travel somewhere for a meeting, I'll do it. They said, yes, I worked from home, it gave me a lot more time to set up my own business. Here's a a few more thoughts for you. If you are valuable and you're valued in what in your day job, speak to your boss about it. Say this is what I this is what I want to do. I actually want to set up my own business in in the uh, in due course. How about can I reduce my hours? Can I work more flexibly to allow me to to start to do that w without letting you down and still fulfilling the objectives of the job, right? And your boss, if you are valuable and valued, should listen to you, right? If you're not valuable and valued, get out of there anyway, because there's no future in it. And then ask yourself, does the job really need to be full-time? The world of work seems to be, is predominantly hung up on the idea of hours, that, you know, a 40-hour week is what they're paying for, and a 40-hour week is what they should get. What I find is that the longer hours people work, the slower they tend to work and the less productive they tend to be. I remember at one time I was, I was working in the, the US for six months and my experience was that compared to working for the parent company back in the UK, my colleagues in the US were, were just as committed. Um, they actually worked longer hours. They tended to work about two hours more each day than their British colleagues. However, you know, we've we've all only got a certain amount of energy in us and we in in the US we compensated by working slower. There were longer coffee breaks, you know? So really step back and, and think outside the box and say, does this job need to be does it need to take a certain number of hours? And it is, it is a really radical tactic. You know, if you are committed to doing this, one thing you could do is just slack off. Stop. Um, I'm not particularly recommending this, but, you know, this, this may fit for you. 
just start taking more time off start being sick more right just do a little bit less work when you're at work or by be doing your own stuff at work and expect to be fired in a couple of months when they start to realize your productivity has gone down okay that's slightly uh, off the cuff that one here's, a, here's another angle on that right thinking about can it be done in fewer hours are there ways that you can optimize your day job can you work more efficiently in your day job right doing more superman and less clark kent right and then we should apply the same thing to your side business as well could you go to your boss and say look i'm not going to do a 40 hour week anymore but i do want to meet the objectives that you've set for me but can we renegotiate this so it's not based on hours right can we renegotiate the targets or the kpis or whatever it is that you're working for here's another another idea in, in Perry Marshall's book, 80-20 Sales and Marketing, he actually says that everybody who's in a white-collar job should have a virtual assistant to do all the crap that you don't want to do or don't have to do that can be done by somebody who is less skilled. Could you hire a virtual assistant to do some of your Clark Kent work? Even if it takes them four hours and saves you one, if it's helping you to have more Superman time to develop yourself, to develop your business, maybe there's some mileage in that. So that's a few ideas about how you might make the transition from day job to building up your side business. Let's look at the other major strategic approach, which is to make the jump. Samuel Johnson, a long time ago, said, Depend on it, sir. When a man knows he is to be hanged in a fortnight, it concentrates his mind wonderfully. Sometimes, just lighting the fuse can generate some magical results and I've got a, my own story about that which is in uh, 2010 my uh, marriage ended I found myself living in a small house that was rented I uh, had almost no belongings with me I had my laptop no internet connection that was it I had to generate an income pretty quickly I, and I was still working for the agency that I'd set up. That was my day job. I was still commuting to there, right, as my day job. But I had to generate more more income. So what I did was I took massive action. I actually set up, I said, right, I'm going to teach the world everything I know about web design. I set, a, I set out a six-month syllabus of work, and I was working probably about three or four hours every night after doing my day job to create this content just in time and it worked but this is an example of taking massive action in order to be able to make the jump it's not necessarily the right thing for everybody and also I couldn't have sustained that I couldn't have carried on working till one or two in the morning five or six days a week which is what I was doing, but I did it for six months and I had a specific target to reach and it did work. So, I mean, the, the, the idea about making the jump is it's going to be risky, it's going to be scary, but the bottom is solid and the worst that can happen very often isn't that bad. But let's move on to a lot of the more tactical advice. What else can we do that can help us either to make the jump, if that's what we want to do, or to make the transition, if that's what's right. So here's a bunch of takeaway tactics that you can apply, right? Number one, do not compete on price. I say it again and again and again. You don't want to be a commodity. You don't want to be part of the herd we should all be aiming to be consultants if we possibly can or certainly to be viewed as experts in our own particular chosen area don't get into price wars with anybody and discounting does not deliver security it's tempting to discount right but unless you're doing it for a specific strategic reason um, it's it's something that I would very very rarely recommend you do 
if you discount your prices you tend to attract poorer clients poorer projects which don't generate the right referrals or the right case studies to attract other good clients if you do cheap work for cheap clients you can expect to get more cheap work from more cheap clients in the future because that's what you've set up for yourself and that's the message that you're putting out to the world you've got to differentiate yourself in the marketplace and if somebody is differentiating themselves as an expert then having a price an appropriate price tag is a sign of that you've also got to discriminate and this is very very challenging very hard to do you're trying to build up a business and it's very hard to say no to a prospect who comes along but if they don't match the right profile it's it can be much more effective and cost effective to say no and to save the opportunity cost that that client could cost you then is to take them on and potentially have a an unrewarding and potentially unprofitable project so my my overall advice is to sell big value sell to the best biggest clients that you can find right be bold sell out of your skin and sell it on value that you can deliver do not sell hours and certainly don't be selling Clark Kent time don't don't be doing things that you can do in your sleep challenge yourself to be better and better and better even if it means that you have to sit and watch videos every night for the first couple of months and educate yourself or you know consult with other people or a mentor or a coach or something like that right push yourself to the limit use your special powers use them every day and develop them sharpen them make them stronger can't stress that enough and finally another challenging one fire any cheap clients if you've got cheap clients on now who just eat your time and it's not really rewarding and it's taking up your time that you could be spending doing other more rewarding stuff fire those guys just fire them this isn't a popularity contest if you are a nice person and you know many of us are it can be very difficult to say to a client I'm sorry I can't work for you anymore yeah but you know you if that's what you've always done taken the nice approach and it's not got you where you want to get maybe you need to try something different as well fire any cheap clients guys Here's tactic number two farm don't hunt so there's a difference hunting is if you imagine you know your your job is to get food for your family for your village whatever hunting means you go out you make a kill you drag it back everyone eats after that you have to repeat you have to go out again with a hunting party make another kill drag it back again everyone eats again right and you have to carry on doing that so either you're hungry or you've got plenty to eat so the risk of a hunting approach and that we're applying this now to sales is the feast or famine scenario feast or famine means either you've got loads of work on and you're really really busy or there's no work on and here's the problem and anyone who's been involved in professional sales at any point knows this really really important to keep filling the top of your funnel your sales funnel even when you're chasing down a big contract keep working keep working on filling the funnel right because otherwise and and if you're a, a a small business as well you land a big job right it's it's worth a good amount of money and you you're really really happy because you know that for the next three months your bills are going to be covered right so you work and work and work and work and it might take a bit longer than you thought because projects normally do and then what happens is the project comes to an end and there's there's no more projects because you've been busy delivering on that one instead of going out finding new ones right and that's the problem with a hunting scenario I would add that it can work and we're going to talk about that in a bit but you've got to think really big and I mean really big about it on the other hand you've got farming and farming is means that you do quite a lot more work up front it's a lot harder to raise a herd of 
cattle than it is to go out and kill one animal in the in the forest. You've and to you know, get a field of wheat or cabbages or walnut trees or grapevines, whatever it is that you want to do. You've got to put a lot of work in to clear your land, put fences up, you know, you've got to protect your livestock and all, all these things that have to be done. But the upside is that when you've created your herd, when you've created your vineyard, when you've created your field of crops, you then get food season after season after season. So a lot more work up front, but there's actually a lot more benefit that you get stretching off into the future. And when you're doing service-based work like this, the ideal is farming type work. So let me give you an example, uh, a few examples of retained work. So this is basically what we're talking about is you set something up that's going to pay you every month. It's not a one-off project. And if you've if you're familiar with any of the, the webinars I've done recently, I'm a big fan of working with clients over a long period of time anyway. And I think that uh, complete redesigns are very, very dangerous and very risky. Because when you change everything on a website, you don't actually know it's going to work any better. Anyway, but I digress. So here's some ideas for work that you can do on a monthly basis. Marketing consulting. It's very easy to get to fall into the trap of thinking that you don't know that much but if you know more than your client knows you could be a consultant for that client on that topic right you don't know everything nobody knows everything nobody knows ev everything about anything just as long as you know more than the client you could be a consultant now my tactical advice on this would be if you're looking to make the change, whether it's a, a clean break or a transition, how about approaching some prospects? Yeah, and you can you could cold call. It might be friends or family. It might be businesses that you use. Right. Say to them that I am a marketing consultant, or I'm a web consultant, I'm a pay per click consultant, whatever it is. My rates are normally thousand dollars a day. However. I'm I'm setting up my new business and if I would like to take you on as a client and I will take you on for five hundred dollars per per month or whatever for, for a day's work instead of a thousand and that is locked in for the duration of our contract. Right? Even if I put my prices up over time, it's locked in. So you don't necessarily need that many of those in order to meet the target. If you get you know, five clients who are willing to sign up for a thousand dollars a month and they're expecting significantly more than a thousand dollars worth of value how hard is it to deliver that thousand dollars worth of value you know if you're if you're getting five thousand dollars a month now from your day job you're delivering five thousand dollars worth of value to somebody so all you need to do is just then do that for five different clients thousand dollars each we'll talk about this a little bit more you can do SEO on a monthly basis. That's something that works quite nicely. Content marketing. Pay-per-click with AdWords Facebook. Social media management. That's actually something that, that, that my partner has done. How about this one? Consulting for your day job. You know, if you make the break, if you quit your day job, I know several people who have quit a permanent job and then gone back doing essentially the same thing as a consultant. And what they're doing there is they're, deliver they're doing the Superman hours but not the Clark Kent hours and they're getting paid the same or more money. Always possible. And then there's my own personal little apple of my eye which is conversion optimization. Now here's a little example. This is a set of six tests that I set up all on Friday. Right, so this is, these have been running, I think, for less than a week. In fact, it may have been Monday. So they've been running literally for a few days, okay? These are not conclusive. These are fairly early results, okay? And this is for a client that I'm not at liberty to, to mention. But just look at what I'm changing. Okay, so I'm using Convert Experiments, my platform of choice. I've, I'm changing the logo and the strap line. 
All right, this is logo and strap line test number one. And it is currently, early days, but currently achieving a 100% increase on the goal of people adding any product to the shopping cart on this e-commerce site. I just spent maybe 15, 20 minutes doing some alternative logo and strap line ideas for this one site. It is generating potentially double the sales, potentially. I've changed one the text of one navigation item on the navigation bar and that at this point suggests that it's having a two-thirds increase in the number of people who add a product to the cart. Changing the buy button from a small grey button to a larger yellow button, more attractive button, on the product pages is having a 50% increase right now on the number of people who add a product to cart. Changing the size of the text of the email address and phone number in the header of the site is meaning that nearly 10% more people are adding a product to the cart. And the list goes on, removing the words you are here from the breadcrumb trail, almost one in six, one six increase. And changing the navigation items to bold and blue is having nearly 30% boost, right? You add all those things up, and this is what I'm trying to trying to tell you. Basically, in the space of just a few hours, I could have doubled or possibly tripled the conversion rate of a particular website, of this one website. Now, this is what I want you to think about. In fact, we'll, we'll get on to that in a second because we're going to be talking about fish after we've finished talking about farming. Here's another tactic for you that you might want to use. And this is something that I've been trying to figure out and trying to work out for a long time and working with my team to develop a, a kind of no-lose package that we can then approach clients with, which I think we've now pretty much cracked. So, bottom line is you have, you're have you working on a fixed monthly fee, right? And that's great, that's farming, right? You want to have a few clients lined up paying you a fixed fee every month so that you know that is actually more security in many ways than a day job can give you because you've got multiple clients if you lose one you just get another one in return for that fee you guarantee some specific results if you followed my ultimate web design course which is part of the pro web design course now it's all about guaranteeing results web design is marketing and should produce fixed results and here's Here's how it works. If you take $1,000 a month off a client and you're promising them that they, their conversion rate's going to go up or their traffic's going to go up through pay-per-click or organic, whatever it is that you're doing, you, are, you need to show them more than $1,000 worth of value, of increased value in their web marketing funnel. So what happens is you just need to deliver. You just need to do what it takes to deliver on that promise, to be true to your word. And I've got, I've got at least two clients on board right now who are paying four-figure monthly fees in order for me to do just that. So I'm not thinking in terms of hours. I'm just thinking I've given my word that I'm going to turn that $2,000 a month into $4,000 a month for that client. And I just do what I have to do. So there's no clock watching. There's no timesheets involved. Just do whatever I have to do. And when you look at the kind of results that we have just looked at on those conversion experiments, it ain't all that hard. Here's another little tactic that's, you know, we're thinking laterally now. Top up work. Maybe you don't have to earn all you know, match your day job income right now by only doing web stuff. There's other stuff that you can do as well. One of the things could be teaching. You know, I know musicians and other people who teach what they know to other people for an hourly rate, and it just helps top up your income. You can subcontract for agencies. 
There's a lot of web agencies out there. And maybe the, you know, the market rate is something like $100 an hour. They'll be billing you out at something like that. So they could then pay you $30, $40, $50 an hour. Right? How many hours do you need to do for an agency like that in order to make a $5,000 or $10,000 a month uh, income, whatever, whatever it is that you need? So say it's $100, $100 an hour going rate. They pay you half of that, they get half of that. You only have to do 200 hours in a month. That's not 25 hours a week, that's 50 hours in a week. <laughs> but yeah, 25 hours in a week would give you a $5,000 uh, a month salary. However, I do have to say this is not a great long-term tactic because bottom line, you're not building up any equity, any collateral, any uh, assets of your own here. You're building up somebody else's business, somebody else's portfolio. Right, so if you're working white label for agencies, it might help in the short term if you're looking to just prop up your income, but it's not a great long-term strategy. And there's a bunch of other things we've done that my partner and I just just love coming up with little business ideas. One is dog walking because we got four dogs and we get we walk our dogs every morning for sometimes two or three hours. And people pay in this country about fifteen pounds an hour. That's like twenty-five dollars an hour. For you to walk their dog and you get people to come up with a number of dogs on leads and walk them around our idea was to turn up in a van take somebody's dog take them out into the wilderness we're calling it rough explorers so the rough as in r-u-f-f -F. take them out into the wilderness let them run around with our dogs get them really tired out clean them up take them back and to do that for 25 30 pounds so your dog goes out for half a day and it only costs a little bit more than paying somebody for an hour. But you see, we're doing that anyway. So why not have little business on the side doing it? We've done sweet bouquets. We've done internet marketing and social media marketing for clients. In fact, we've just, um, we've just started working for our local butcher to do their Facebook marketing to help drive some more business that way, which is not too difficult. You know, it's great local business. And we're doing that in return for free meat. Lots and lots of ideas. We've done SEO, we've done content writing for uh, clients based on our experience. And the good thing about that kind of work is you can dial it up or dial it down as you need to. And some of it's seasonal as well. So let's move on to fishing. Fishing question mark. I want you to just think about something, which is a fish is a fish, right? Fishing is fishing. You can sit with a rod in a stream and pull out a tiddler after tiddler after tiddler, or you can sit with a rod and pull out a, a big tuna fish, which is 100, 200 times the weight, 100, 200 times the, the, the value of a little fish. But fishing is fishing. Is it that much more work to land a tuna fish than it is to land a little sprat? And I suggest that maybe it isn't. So applying this to your potential business, and especially if you're applying the consulting model that I suggested earlier when you're working on a monthly fee and guaranteeing a certain uh, result for the client, remember we're working on value delivered, not hours spent. I've, I had a client recently who was turning over $12,000 a month and I took on a project of work for them. They gave me a fixed fee. I promised to deliver them double that value over six months. Right? So the fee that they pay me, they're going to get double that in extra profits within six months and I guarantee that. Now, just let's say that I came across a client that was just a bigger fish and they turn over $120,000 a month, or they turn over $1.2 million a month, right? That if I did the same work and, and achieved the same impact on conversion rates or conversions or sales for a larger client, that would be worth 10 times the value or 100 times the value just because it's a larger client and they've got a bigger turnover. So it amplifies the impact of any improvement that's made. So if we're working on value then, 
that would mean that instead of earning ten thousand dollars I'm earning a hundred thousand dollars for the same work or potentially a million dollars for the same work and the great thing is it's a win-win so think about how you fish do you go out there into the marketplace looking for small businesses who don't mind paying three thousand dollars for a, for a website right if you do just ask yourself how much different would it be to do a thirty thousand dollar website for a client who's got a bigger business how much more different how different would it be to do a website that's going to deliver thirty thousand dollars worth of value to a client who's got a bigger business just think of it that way and suddenly when we're thinking about the value that you create with what you do and not hours that you do or the amount of work that's done then the whole world of potential profit and opportunity opens up before you so my advice is think bigger if you're going to a little pond and using small fish bait and pulling out small fish don't then conclude from that that there's only small fish out there you might need to change where you're fishing and you might need to change the bait that you use and pricing is one of those aspects of your bait it's part of what could attract or repel a client if you're using small pricing to attract small clients don't expect big clients to come your way they're not going to take you seriously so think bigger the same work for a bigger client could be many times more valuable and that could mean many times more profit for you so let's just switch it from fishing and say how big can we think how about we go whale hunting there's a book called whale hunting if you want to check it out on Amazon uh, it, I, I do advise reading it if you're interested in sales strategy and it's based on this concept you've got your um, Eskimo Inuit uh, tribe members and they've got various different ways that they could feed their family in very harsh conditions and feed their community one thing you can do is go and drill a hole in the ice and sit there all day with a rod in the hole fishing for herring or whatever kind of fish you get in the Arctic and you sit there for long hours and you might pull out a bunch of fish and remember this is we're talking in the kind of hunting analogy now yeah you've got to do the work to get the food right and if you stop doing the work the food stops coming it's different from farming but you get a you know a bucket full of fish you take them back everyone has a meal the next day you have to go out again and do it again now they might do that occasionally for uh, for some variety but what they found is whale hunting is far better value so instead of just one guy going out with a fishing rod they have a big canoe with a bunch of guys or, or several boats a bunch of guys and they've got specialized jobs and somebody's job is to go out spotting the whales and other guys you know have got different different jobs and then what they are aiming to do is to bring back a, a whale right you know it uh, makes me feel a bit sad but you know this is this is the, the way that they've uh, survived for centuries um, nothing's wasted and here's the important thing everybody in the community eats for months from the proceeds of that one hunt so instead of having to go out every day and fish you put massive effort with a team of people who are specialists you go out you do one good thing and bring back the biggest haul you can and then you don't have to go out fishing every day so this is why I'm saying that the hunting analogy the hunting uh, approach can work if you do it big enough now, if you land a project that you then deliver with a group of colleagues which also gives you security as well and you do that over a period of several months and you know that you're going to be paid for those several months it can work out well you just need to make sure you've got more work coming in at the end of it or maybe that one project would give you all the revenue you need for a year or two years because it's certainly possible so this is the way I like to think of it if everybody is a specialist and everyone knows what their special powers are then it's Avengers Assemble 
you know, when you go whale hunting, it's everyone's got their own particular specialty, you know, and we all get together and can achieve incredible things rather than everybody trying to be a jack of all trades. So, a few tips on that then. You can share or trade your special powers, your superpowers, with other specialists. I've talked about this already. You trade an hour of something you do really well can save somebody a lot of time, and they give you an hour of what they do well can save you a lot of time, and everybody wins. Right? So doing it all on your own isn't necessary. You don't have to think about that. Now, you may be thinking, well, I'm not an expert. What if I'm not an expert in my particular area? What if I don't understand conversion optimization or pay-per-click or copywriting? Yeah, I'm not at that level yet. What if I don't have this powerful marketing channel? You know, how do I find these clients? How do they come my way? So I'm going to tell you now about the, the group that I have, the group that I've put together, and I'm going to invite you to be part of that group because it solves so many of the problems that we've talked about already today. So it's called the Pro Web Design Alliance. And you may know that I have my Pro Web Design course. It's now seven months worth of content that covers absolutely every aspect of being a professional web designer, web marketer, and having your own business in that area. The Pro Web Design Alliance is for people who are committed to making a a, a business for themselves in this. And let me tell you what the what the benefits are that people on the alliance get. So right now, there's about 22 independent web experts. We've got people who are expert in copywriting, in project management, in programming, uh, systems design. Um, I say copywriting. I mean, conversion optimization, all, all these kinds of things. Uh, Pay per click, local SEO, that kind of thing. Lots of independent web experts and me. You get instant access to all the content that I produce all the, the private webinars, any books that I create. Plus there's two, two two-hour video conferences every week that you can attend where you can come and say, this is the challenge that I'm facing. And you can have other people who've been through that, who are going through that, who've got their own experiences. We're all then bringing our experiences together to help each other get through it. And this is now, this is my, my full-time job is to support this group. You get guaranteed professional support. We've got our private forums for everyone who's, who's taken the course. There's a special forums um, forum on there where if you post a request to say, how do I do this? Or what's gone wrong there? Or can I get some advice on how to make this better? You are guaranteed to get professional response from me and from other members. There's also the opportunity for one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, my job is to help all of these guys succeed. I told you what my mission is in the world, is to learn and to explore and discover what makes websites work, and then to pass that knowledge on to the next generation of web designers. This is how I do it. So I want you to leverage my consulting skills. If you land a client and say, I need to deliver $1,000 worth of value or $10,000 worth of value every month to these guys, not quite sure what to do, Get on the call, get on Skype with me. I've been doing this for several years. I could probably give you $1,000 worth of insights in the first five minutes. We can help you help you set up tests, run tests, whatever it is that we need to do. That This is my job. You can also then use my marketing channels. I have a website that gets three, 4,000 visits every day. It ranks very well for a, for a lot of uh, keywords. I've got a mailing list that's knocking on 25,000 names. I can, you know, I can use that to promote any service that, um, that my group wants to offer. So if you've got something that, that is unique, that's special, that's interesting, that's valuable, then I would love to help promote that. And that could be for you as an individual or for the whole group. And this is a whale hunting group. Right now, we are delivering one $25,000 project. We are 
bidding for another one that's in the going to be in the region of a hundred thousand dollars and you know anyone in the group can say there's a whale here i think there's a there's a big opportunity and then what we can do is we can put in a put a hunting party together to win that project and then to deliver it without anybody any individual taking on too much pressure so bunch of benefits to to being part of this team the price of membership is only 197 dollars a month if you you there's also an option to get it yearly where you get 12 months for the for the price of nine which is a 25 percent saving but I've set up a coupon code that's only valid for the next 24 hours so if you're watching the recording of this it ain't gonna work right but if you come along to this address prowebdesigncourse.com slash professional dot html there's a summary on there um, I've actually added more benefits since I created that page but you go along to there remind yourself of all the benefits and then if you wanna join enter that code quit day job all in capitals and that'll get you another further 25 percent discount and that will run for the duration yeah, every month for as long as you're a member of the alliance then that will run there uh, if you've got any questions about this feel free to email me ben at benhunt.net um, i hope that i've achieved my objectives on this on this presentation to help you to believe that yes you can do it yes it is possible right to dispel some of the fears and to giving you a selection of tactics that you could use and you can start applying right now to help you know this is what i should be doing this is what i need to stop doing quite often is more important um, i would really strongly advise you to to try out alliance membership you know it, it really is genuine what I do every week is to create new content like this my job is to do the research to support the team because that's how we're gonna end up with a better web right I I can't I can't create um, loads of new websites myself every week it's just not possible so you know now I've really contracted what I do down to supporting this group of people and making sure that this course and the content that I create just makes the the best most comprehensive most practical useful body of knowledge that is available anywhere for people who really want to take web design and web marketing seriously so i want to thank you very very much for your time and if you've got any questions email me ben at benhunt.net i'm away on vacation next week but uh, i promise i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can and again thank you very very much for your time